Wake up. There's somebody in the hall. Did you hear that? Something's wrong. Open your eyes. They're open. They're open. I don't hear anything. Oh, honey, for heaven's sakes, what's the matter? Well, the dog next door woke me up, and I heard Tina's door open and footsteps in the hall. No, you were dreaming. Is no dream. Pete, I have the strangest feeling. You shouldn't have eaten those enchiladas. All right, I'll get up. You dare go back to sleep, Peter Wiggins. Now wake up. Oh, honey, it's nice and quiet now. Please let me go back to sleep. I've got a nine o'clock broadcast. Oh, I can't go back to sleep until I find out if Tina's all right. concludes the 9 o'clock news, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back on the air at 12 with the latest headline. Until then, this is Peter Wiggins, your Gump Cough Drop reporter, saying good morning. Well, you're hot as a pistol this morning, Pete. I don't know why. I was up half the night with Tina. Nothing serious? No, just bad dreams. Hitting a paddle in there. That's not funny. Oh, what a night. Howling dogs, scared wives. You'd think murder was being committed on Round Hill Road. Pete, you're right. Murder was committed out in your street last night. What? Amanda Forsythe, the wacky heiress, was shot and killed at Round Hill and Bentley. It just came in, Mr. Wiggins. Good night. That's right down the street from me. Let me see that. There's more coming in, Mr. Wiggins. Well, let's have a gander. body had been found at 8 o'clock. It had been thrown behind a hedge. Holy smoke, I walked right by it this morning. I wonder... Wonder what, Mr. Wiggins? No, uh, skip it, Parker. Amanda Forsythe. It's funny, she was worth a million smackaroos if she was worth a dime. Yeah, she was one spectacular dame. Yeah, a real play, girl. She had a great time while it lasted. She was a siren, a harem scarum. People who do the crazy things she did are bound to come to a shoddy end. She lived violently and she died violently. 
I always say that... Yeah, I know. As you always say, death is the wages of sin or of verse of ice. Uh, that'll be all, Miss Barker. Thanks. I always have better luck with butter than with shortening. Well, next time you can use the butter and I'll use the shortening. I wonder if these are sweet enough for Daddy. Let me tell you. Mmm. just right. They're delicious. Listen, Dina, I want to go out and take a peek at the paper. You put my cookies in the oven for me, will you, please? Sure, Mommy. <laughs> You have the most active imagination in the world. My cookies are burning. Hello. Hello, darling. I just finished talking to John Featherstone of the Child Adoption Institute. About Tina? Yes. Yeah. How did you know? Intuition, I guess. What about her? Well, I don't know yet, but uh, Featherstone wants to see us right away. How soon do you suppose you could meet me at his office? I'll be down there just as soon as I can. Bye, dear. It's not my intention to alarm either of you, but I think somebody's going to try to take Tina away from you. But that's impossible. She's ours. She belongs to us. We adopted her legally. Well, the legality of the adoption could always be opened if fraud were involved in the original proceeding. What do you mean, fraud? For the last couple of days, I received several telephone calls inquiring about Tina's adoption. Who from? They wouldn't say. What do they want to know? Well, the thing that concerned me most were the persistent questions about your age at the time of the adoption. Well, that's easy. I, I was 21. Well, what, what does her age have to do with it? Foster parents must be of full age at the time of adoption. Otherwise, the entire proceeding is illegal and can be set aside. Even if I did make a mistake, it seems like such a little thing to take our baby away from us. No, oh, now, don't worry, darling. Nobody's going to take Tina away from us. Nobody. Nobody can take her away from you. If Mrs. Wiggins has a birth certificate, she disproves the claim when it's made. Well, of course she has a birth certificate. No, I don't. Don't you remember? It was destroyed when the town hall in Rude Bridge, Vermont, burned down. But I do have a christening certificate from the church where I was baptized. I was just a few weeks old. Would that do? I'm sure it would. Do you know where it is, honey? Yes, I think Ross has it. He has all the rest of the adoption papers. Uh, he's our attorney, Ross Atherton. Oh, that's fine. Now that you're forewarned, you're forearmed and ready for trouble if it comes. Oh, that's a relief. Well, thanks a lot. You've been swell. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Featherstone. Well, don't try. Now, Mr. Wiggins, you better check with your attorney right away. Good luck and goodbye. Goodbye. I'll beat it right over to Ross's office and pick up that certificate. It seems strange that somebody would delve into the past like that, Pete. Frankly, I can't understand it. Miss Benson, bring me the file on Bettina Wiggins. The whole adoption proceedings, please. Have you any idea who might press charges against you? No, but I have no intention of losing my daughter to anyone. I know how you feel, Pete. Say, I don't remember having Ellen's christening certificate here. Well, I'm sure she filed it with all the other stuff you have on the adoption. With me? Sure. I don't remember it. I thought she had it at home.
Will that be all, Mr. Atherton? Yes, thank you, Miss Benson. There's no christening certificate here, Pete. Well, that's bad, Ross. Now, don't fall apart. Ellen's probably got it at home. Yeah, but even if it is, she can't find it. She never remembers where she puts anything. Well, I'm certain it isn't here. You'll find it somewhere. Suppose, suppose we can't find it. Then we're in trouble. You don't suppose the child's real mother is behind this? How could she be? Miss Carolyn Sugar, showgirl at the Bomber nightclub. Seems incredible that Mother Love would have blossomed at this late date. And she hasn't a possible claim. She legally signed the child over to the Foundation before you adopted her. Yeah, well, then it can't be Carolyn Sugar. No, I don't think so. You better call Ellen and get her on the trail of that certificate. Oh, yeah. Well... Holy smoke! What's the matter? Look at the time. I'm late for the broadcast. Got to run. I'll call you later. And that concludes the 9 o'clock news, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, 4 o'clock news. I'll be back on the air at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So until then, this is Peter, uh, Peter Wiggins, your gump coughed off reporter, saying so long. Hey, what's the matter with you? That sure was a stinker of a broadcast. Old man Gump will be choking on his own cough drops if he caught it. No, I guess I'm off my feet. Off your feet? Say, that's the next worst thing to death itself. Now, I know a joint where they serve the most delicious soft-shell crab. Oh, please, Joe, don't take me so literally. Well, you gotta eat if you want to sound significant. Not today. Oh, Mr. Wiggins, Mrs. Wiggins is on the phone. Oh, thanks. Are you all right? What do you mean? Well, you said 9 o'clock instead of... Yeah, I know, but don't rub it in. Yeah, honey? What's the matter, Pete? Your broadcast found it all mixed up. Why wouldn't it be? Where's your christening certificate? Hasn't Ross got it? No, you've got it. Now, listen, honey, you've got to find it. I can't tell you how important it is. But, Pete, I'm sure I gave it to Ross. I don't know where to look for it. Well, it must be around the house someplace, so start hunting. I'll be right home. Darling, I could have sworn I left the certificate here in the desk. Yes, and you could have sworn you left it with Ross, too. Peter! Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I guess I'm off my track. But I'm just so worried about this thing, it's made me sick. We'll find it. Don't worry, Pete. We've got to find it. Maybe we won't be needing it after all. Mr. Featherstone just warned us something might happen. Well, but if it does, don't you realize without that certificate we haven't a leg to stand on? Peter, don't frighten me like that. Aren't you two going to eat anything? Oh, I guess I'm just not hungry tonight. I haven't got much of an appetite either. Here I slave over a hot stove to prepare a fine supper. Just loaded with vitamins. And you're not hungry. How do you expect to grow up to be healthy parents if you won't eat? I guess I've got a tummy ache. What you need is a dose of castor oil. Mrs. Wiggins? Yes. I'm Chief Muller here. This is Officer Murphy. We're investigating the Amanda Forsythe murder. You may have read about it. Yes, yes, I did. Mind if we come in and ask you and your husband a few questions? No, not at all. Come right on in here. to get some information on the Amanda Forsythe murder. You heard our daughter. Yeah. They found this in your front yard. We've been backtracking from where we found the body this morning, and Murphy picked up the hat. Well, that does it. The child was telling the truth, Chief, and that uh, means that Amanda Forsythe was pretty definitely in this house last night. Did you see her? Well, not us. 
Alan heard her, but uh, Tina insists there was a lady in her room wearing that hat who woke her up and talked to her. Did you know Miss Forsythe? No, I didn't. Well, I met her once or twice over the years through her brother, Freddie. He and I went to school together. Yeah, we checked on the brother. Have you any idea why Amanda Forsythe would come here? No, I haven't. Unless it had something to do with our daughter. What do you mean about your daughter? Well, I don't know exactly, except that uh, Tina said she asked her questions about her being adopted, which she was. It's all very strange to me. I can't understand it. It wouldn't be so strange if Amanda Forsythe was a child's mother. You said she was adopted. Yes, but we know who the real mother is. The Foundation showed us the records at the time of the adoption. Although uh, we were warned that someone may try to take the Tina away from us. Does that mean anything to you, Chief? Well, not at the moment. Right now, our job is to find the killer of Amanda Forsythe. When we do, we may have some answers for you. Uh, good night, folks. Good night, Chief. Don't leave town, Mr. Wiggins. We may want you for questioning. Why do you suppose I want to question you? Oh, you know how the police are, honey. They just... Wait, you don't suppose he thinks I did? But Tina. Nobody's going to take you away from us, ever. Tina, listen. You're our little girl. Ours. We picked you out of a thousand others. We love you more than you love us. And nobody or nothing is ever going to take you away from us. keep out of the foresight case. We'd better call the police right away. No, we break the adoption wide open. We're not prepared to fight it. Well, what will we do? We've got to find Carolyn Sugar. She's our only hope. Franklin Street by the name of Willie Gold. Let's go. 
He's been my bookie. Well, so what do you want? Well, hello, Al. He wants you to answer some questions while I ask and he listens. Sure, you know me, Al. Anything for a pal. Come on in. We can listen out here. We want to see Miss Sugar. Her? That thing. That two-time and double cross a little trap. I'd like to see her myself. You mean she's gone? Land is the expression. Hit the road. She took off from New York this a.m. How come? Well, some guy called her last night about 11 o'clock. She goes out. She comes back. Keep talking. This a.m. she packs a bag with a jeer and a sneer and flashes a water green back to the choker beetle. So I says, what's what? broken me? And she says, drop dead, she says. And hops the rattler. The super chief, no less. With her off for a Broadway show. She says. And that's the last I've seen of her, and I hope I never... Never see her again. Where did she get the dough, Willie? She didn't nice throw for me, Al. Huh? She must have had nearly two little G's and a first-class ticket on the Santa Fe. You think she really got a Broadway offer? What? With her pipes? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. With her figure? Don't make me laugh twice. All right, Willie, we won't make you laugh. So long. Look, Al, I... So long, Willie. So long, Al. Oh, say, Al. So long, yes. Willie. So long. You suppose she ever ran out of Los Angeles like she did? Simply because she knew that you wanted to see her badly. She didn't know that. Somebody else did. Two G's is a lot of kelp for Carolyn Sugar to have and to hold at one time. Uh-uh. We have company. What do you mean? You're being tailed. Ah, oh, don't start turning around like a wild man. You'll scare him off. Look, Mr. Wiggins, maybe you better level with me. I told you the truth. But not all of the truth. No, I guess I haven't. You see, I'm in a tough spot. I got a phone call telling me to keep out of the Amanda Forsythe case or else. What's Amanda Forsythe got to do with Carolyn Sugar? Well, that's for you to find out. How did you get into this case? Spell him like a ton of bricks. Well, somebody isn't kidding. Maybe you better take that advice. Keep out and let me handle it. The guy behind us is a chief hood named Benny Muscle. Let's turn this next corner and see what happens. Howdy doody. Wait a second, Al. Wait a second. I, I can explain everything. I'm listening. Take it easy, Al. I didn't know you were in this. I am in it. Who put John Wiggins? Do I have to repeat that question? No, no, I'll, I'll sing, I'll sing. Guy at the Paul Mall, paid me 20 bucks. A uh, guy named Forsyth. Ready, Forsyth? That's right. That should help me out the truth. Get lost. So that's the pitch. Freddy Forsyth. That's what the man said. Mr. Garrity, you're quite a fellow. My mother always thought so. If this is one baby I want to handle by myself. Wonderful to see you. All right, Freddy, start talking. Why did you hire a cheap thug to follow me around? Good heavens, Pete, have you gone crazy? Say words, Freddy. If you don't, I'll spoil this shirt and then a tie, and finally I'll spoil you. I don't know what you're raving about. Wait, it's the truth. For heaven's sakes, old man, have you gone bomby? You mean you didn't hire him? Hire who? What are you trying to say? Did you ever hear of a guy named Benny Muscle? No. He was tailing me. He said you hired him. He was lying. I never heard of him before in my life. Good Lord, Pete, why would I hire someone to follow you? Well, I'm asking the questions and you're answering them. But there's simply no answer. So help me, Freddy, if you're lying. Take it easy, Pete. Well, you've an awful gall, breaking in here, threatening my life. But he said it was you. And you accept the word of a cheap hoodlum against mine. You know better than that. You know, Pete, it looks to me as if you've been tricked. I'm sorry, Freddy. I guess I acted a little too hastily. As if I didn't have trouble enough already. You put me in a fine frame of mind for the funeral. Oh, Mandy. Dear old Mandy. Sad, isn't it? Yeah. Pete, 
You don't think this chap following you had something to do with Mandy's murder, do you? It could be. Well, you should call the police. Tell them all about it. I think I will. Uh, look, old boy, I've got to get ready for the thing, you know. I must ask you to leave. Well, uh, goodbye, Freddy. I'm sorry I lost my head. Uh, I... I quite understand, but I really must dash. Goodbye. What's the matter with you? You call me a cheap hoodlum, and I don't like it. But you got no respect for my reputation? Clumsy fool. Here, beat it. If you're smart, you'll get out of town. There's no telling what he'll do when he gets that summons to appear in court. Tommy gun is. It's like an automatic rifle, only it has a... It has a... It has a compensator to control muscle cars. It weighs 9 pounds, 13 ounces, and the recoil is not unpleasant, even in full automatic fire. Don't rely on the Tommy gun too much. Oh. What? Why not? Very inaccurate weapon, except a chart range. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well... There I was with a plugged heel, but still alive and kicking. I pull my rod. Blackie heads for the door with the dough. I plug it. The rest of the hoods lose their nerve and lamb. Run into the cops outside. That's how it was. And you couldn't be a policeman anymore on a of your heel? That's the story. A very unhappy ending to a brilliant career. Charity! Oh, I didn't know anyone was here. You were upstairs, Mommy, and you said not to disturb you. You have quite a little lady of the house there, Mrs. Williams. This is Al Garrity. Remember, honey, I told you about him? He's the man that's going to find Carolyn Sugar for us. I'm sorry, Mr. Garrity. I guess I'm just a little jumpy tonight. You have good reason to be. I'm getting a little jumpy myself. Why, is something wrong? Let's say something isn't right. Come on, Tita. Time for you to go to bed. Oh, Mommy, Al was telling me a story. Al, that's Mr. Garrity. He said to call him out, huh? That's right. Well, Daddy and Mr. Garrity have some very important things to talk about. So you come on upstairs and get ready for bed. Well, good night, Al. Will you come and see me some more? Some more? I'm going to marry you when you reach the age of consent. Well, you have to ask my Daddy. Good night. Mm -hmm. 
Good night, Kid Weekly. <laughs> you have quite a little package there, Mr. Williams. You can say that again. Come on, let's go in the other room. Cigarette? No, thanks. Oh. Now I see Artina knows so much about guns. Yeah, it's a hobby of mine. Surprised to see me? I don't think anything would ever surprise me again. I wouldn't count on that. When you're up here, here in a murder case, anything can happen. All right, my friend, what was with Foresight? Well, he said your friend, Benny Muscle, was lying. Did he now? Did you believe it? Yeah, I think I did. Freddie never was a very good liar. No toys tonight, Tina. Come on, I want you to go to bed and get right to sleep. I'm not looking for toys, Mommy. What are you looking for? Here it is. That's the old family Bible. Where did you get that? In the attic when I was playing with Great Granddaddy William's war sword. You haven't been playing with a sword. I was just using it for a cake knife. Well, and the Bible? I've been saying extra special prayers with it every night. Well, you say some extra special prayers and they get right to sleep. Bible. This certifies that Ellen Eve McPhail. Well, sure, here it is, right here. The seventh day of July, 1920. That means that you were 28 this year, which means you were 21 at the time we adopted Tina seven years ago. Well, that's it, honey. That's everything. Let them start any monkey business about your age. Now, with the cold water department. Oh, no, Mr. Gowdy. I have a policy of being honest with my friends, Mrs. Wiggins. Well, what are you getting at? That certificate. It could be challenged. There's no witness. And the signer is dead now, you say? Yes. But it's an official record. It's official, all right. But it may not be enough to clinch the case. I'm going after Miss Sugar like a bloodhound. I may have some answers for you tomorrow morning. Be at my office. I'll be there. Don't worry. And watch yourself, Pete. You know too much. You're moving in on this case. Somebody might... Well... You mean you think Pete may be in danger? Oh, no, honey. He just meant that it... I mean that he is in danger. Make him be careful. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Pete. Good night. Oh, incidentally, that nag of mine at Holly Park, Miss Sugar, remember? She won. I told you. It was a hunch. Okay. Thanks, Miss Greenhall. I appreciate the call. Thanks. Pleasure. Come in. Hello, Pete. Hello, Al. You remember our mutual friend, Willie Gold? Sure, I remember him. Hiya, pal. Everything safe, sane, and quiet at your place last night, Pete? Well, for a change, yes. Well, we did get something out of it. The third race at Holly Park, until he named Boss Lady. Now I ask you. Well, I'm glad my troubles are giving you some handicapping, at least. Don't get sore, Pete. It's always darkest before the... Well, you know. Come on, Willie. Tell the man the pretty words you were just telling me. You mean where sugar is? That's what I mean. The doll is on the super cheap. She is in compartment A. Luxury. The Pullman is number D-54. She arrives in New York tomorrow morning. How did you find all that out? I sent Willie down to the station to pose as an outraged husband. Yeah, that's right. An outraged husband. I grabbed a hold of this monkey with sold as a ticket, and I says to him, Brother, I says to him, if you don't talk, I says to him, I'm going to break your killer. arm, I says to him. Killer. Get killer. to the road, killer. Huh? So long, killer. Don't you want to hear the... So long, killer. So long, Al. Huh? Pardon me. Hello. Speaking. Good Samaritan, eh? Good. I appreciate the call. There'll be a private eye to meet Carolyn Sugar in New York. He'll shake her down for the name of the guy that paid her to take a powder. But that's wonderful. 
Let's go into this further. You adopted that little girl seven years ago, August, you told me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, how old was she when you took over from the Institute? Four weeks. Me, oh my. That means that in July of that year, Carolyn Sugar was hospitalized for the birth of that baby. No? That's right. But she wasn't. I checked every hospital in town. She was in a show called Accolade that ran through the summer of 1941, and she didn't miss a performance. And she wasn't the mother. Roger. Somebody paid her to be the mother. Somebody who wanted to remain anonymous. Guess who? Amanda Forsythe. Could be. I'm checking on Amanda Forsythe right now. What she was doing at that time. When I get anything concrete, I'll let you know. Garrity? You're a miracle man. What about that certificate? Well, I've got it. You get it over to your lawyer right away. And step on it. Check. Come on. Oh, Tony? Al Garrity. Yeah. Give me two bucks across the board on a Billy called Step on it. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt of it. Amanda didn't leave a will. She died in test aid. Just what does that mean, Ross, old boy? Well, normally it might mean one awful mess. But since you and your Aunt Lydia are the only surviving kin, the entire estate will go to you. The entire estate, eh? Must be quite a sock for. I always wondered why Dad left the work to Mandy. Because he was afraid to entrust anything that required responsibility to you. Oh, stop picking on me, old girl. I shan't run through the money, not that quickly. By the way, Ross, how much do you think that might come to? A million dollars. A million dollars? Of course, there'll be inheritance taxes. Ross. Yes, please. Four days before she died, Amanda told me that she destroyed her old will and made a new one. Well, if she made a new will, my dear, she didn't file a copy of it here. What difference does it make? Oh, come on, old girl. Don't tell me you're going to try to take half the loot. Well, you're loaded right now with more than you'll ever live to. I know what you mean, Freddie. No, I'm not interested in half the money, but I am interested in what Amanda wanted to do with it. I'm sure she never meant it to pass into your hands. That's a sweet girl. Yes? I'm Mr. Wiggins to see you. Oh, tell him to come in. Wiggins, dear old Petey. Well, if you don't mind, I'll be running along. What's the hurry, Freddie? Pete, come in. You know, Freddie, this is Lydia Forsythe, Freddie's aunt. Well, how do you do? I think we met once before, a long time ago, remember? Very well. You went to school with Freddie, didn't you? That's oh, right. Oh, quite. Nice to see you, old man. I want to have a chat with you. Very important. But I've got to bolt now, really. Freddie's always in a hurry to get someplace. Sit down and waste time. Well, Ross? There she is. Ellen's christening certificate. We finally found it in the old family Bible. Isn't that a break? A break? It's wonderful. If anything comes up, this will definitely handle any question of Ellen's age. Well, be sure you keep it under lock and key. You bet I will. And just in case that isn't enough, I'm trying to find the real mother. Well, that is the woman we supposed to be the mother. Carolyn Sugar? Yes, uh, I've got a man tracking her down. Isn't she in town? No, she's on her way to New York, but uh, we've located her. We'll nail her. Why is she so important, Pete? Well, because it begins to look like Carolyn Sugar isn't the real mother of Bettina after all. But all the adoption papers have her listed as the mother. Then she could have been paid to play the part. Well, I'm strong along, Ross. Thanks so much for your help. Nice to see you again. You too, Mr. Wiggins. Well, I'm just leaving, too. Uh, I wonder if you'd mind giving me a lift uptown. Well, I don't go. Oh, of course, it was too much trouble. No, no, not at all. Please join me. Goodbye, Ross. Goodbye, Lydia. See you later, Ross. Oh, Pete. If you learn anything I should know, call me here. I'll be working tonight. Right. Mrs. Forsythe. Where shall I drop you? I'll tell you when we get there. I was going to call you. I wanted to ask you some questions about your niece. Amanda? Yes. Did she ever marry? Well, really, Mr. Wiggins. She was married, wasn't she? Yes, she was. To whom? A boy named Paul Whittier. What happened to her? Killed in the war. Why did Amanda keep the marriage so secret? All right, I'll tell you. Because she had a baby, and that baby was turned over... You are becoming very rude. I'll have to ask you to get out of the car. I'm turning at the next corner. I'm sorry you won't try to help me with you. Thanks anyway for the lift. Peter Wiggins. 
Yes. Is Mr. Peter Wiggins at home? Yes. Pete! Coming. Peter Wiggins? Yes. Sorry, brother. You too, lady. This is an order to show cause. What does that mean? I don't know yet. Says we have to be in court on the 22nd. 22nd. That's only 10 days from today. Show cause why I said adoption should not be set aside and so forth. Perjury. Mrs. Wiggins, not of full age at the time of the adoption. The child shall be returned to the Child Foundation. Pete, I'm frightened. Oh, honey, you sure found that certificate in the nick of time. Now, if we can get Garrity to nail Miss Sugar before that ten days are up. Holy smoke, look at this. Do you see who signed this thing? Amanda Forsythe. But Pete, she's dead. Here, I better phone Ross right away. Hello, Ross. This is Pete. Uh, just thought I'd check to make sure you'd be in the office tonight. Something important's come up. Okay, I'll see you about eight. Right. What happened? I don't know. Sitting here working and bang, everything went black. Where's that certificate? It's in the desk. Oh, no, it is. What? That certificate must mean a lot to somebody besides us. Ah, oh, that's my fault. I should have put it in the safe. I'm sorry, Pete. Well, being sorry doesn't help. Yeah, now something else has happened. Take a look at those summons. See anything wrong with that? Amanda Forsythe plaintiff. She's dead. That could mean... Wait a minute. Wagnall's the attorney. I'll call him at home and see what's up. Atherton, counsel for Ellen and Peter Wiggins. We've been served in this Bettina Wiggins complaint, but your client is dead. Yes. What? Oh, I see. Thanks, Mr. Wagnall. Goodbye. Now what's the matter? Freddie's taking over the case and we'll press it. Why, that double-crossing heel. He's lied from the beginning. And now it makes sense. Lydia was protecting Freddie. What are you raving about? What do you need, a map? Freddy hit you, Freddy stole that certificate. Well, I'll take care of Freddy. He'll tell the truth if I have to beat it out of him. No dice, Ross. This guy's for me. If anybody's going to cut him up, I am. You take care of that head. I'll call you later. Right. Yes, sir? Where's Mr. Forsythe? Oh, he checked out. He said he was leaving for a trip. Didn't say where to, sir. Mind if I use the phone? Oh, go right ahead. Walnut, 5696. Hello. Garrity, this is Peter Wiggins. Pete! Look, I want you to come over to the house. Yeah, right away. I'll meet you there. Trouble? No, oh, plenty of it. I'm on my way. So I came out on the roof. Sammy the snitch was 150 feet away. It was raining. He blasted away at me. Him with a sawed-off scattergun. So I yanked my Roscoe, and I banged away one shot, hit him right in the kneecap. What do you think of that? Let me see your Roscoe, Al. Huh? Let me see your gun. Oh, all right. A hundred and fifty feet, and the rain with the revolver is wonderful shooting, my daddy says. Oh, I wasn't the best shot on the force for nothing. Daddy says the short barrel guns are very inaccurate. Yeah? Did you say 150 feet? Well... In the rain? Oh, maybe I did embroider it a little bit. 
Get into bed, Tina. Mr. Garrity, Peter's here at last. Oh, Mommy, Alice told me a story. Boy, was it glory. Boy, was it exaggerated, she said. <laughs> Good night, Alice. Good night, baby. I beat you here. All right, Pete, spill it. You're bursting out all over. Well, somebody, guess who, conked Ross and stole that certificate. What? I went over to put the bee on Freddy Forsythe, and he's gone. Say, that guy has one cool tomato. I'm sorry, Pete. It is trouble. Don't look that way. Nobody's going to take the kid. Yeah, but we've got to be in court on the 22nd. We'll be there. Your friend Freddy will be there. Maybe we can give him a little surprise. Yeah, but how? I'll leave tonight by plane to bring back the evidence of Ellen's age from Root Bridge, Vermont. I'll bring back Miss Carolyn Sugar from New York to break a murder case, or I'll break her neck. Yeah, you better take some money with you. I'll settle up when I get back. Hey, what am I saying? This trip's going to run into dough. Can you stand the bite? Here's 500. That'll cover the expense of the trip anyway. There won't be no fees on this job. I can't be dough conscious with my future father-in-law. And while you're gone, I'll see if I can't get some information out of Lydia Forsythe. You'd better stay home. Well, Freddie may be over there. If not, she'll know where he is. I've got to find that guy. Take it easy. I'll do the work. Say goodbye to Alan. So long, Pop. Lots of luck. Same to you. I heard the door. Where did Mr. Garrity go? Oh, he was in a hurry, honey. He's got a lot to do and very little time to do it in. Where are you going? Over to Lydia Forsythe's. Oh, Pete, I wish you wouldn't. Oh, now, don't worry, honey. Well, Mr. Garrity said that there was danger, and for you to be careful, and it makes sense. Now, look, honey. It's 7 o'clock, and I promise you I'll be back in this house at 7.30. Okay? Oh, okay. Hey, mister. We're looking for Paula Street. Is this it? Oh, no, you... Like you're going to live, Peter. Yeah, but for how long? <laughs> oh, you were roughed up a little, but you'll be all right if you take it easy. Thanks, Doc. Say, tell that to Ellen on the way out, will you? I will. Goodbye, Peter. Come on, Doc. Dr. Adams. Oh, well, you won't need me anymore, Mrs. Wiggins, but make sure he gets a good rest. I will. Thank you very much, Doctor. I'll see you out the car. Here's something to bring your strength back. Oh, I've got it back. I could crush an egg with my bare hands. Anyway, these will do you good. All right, nurse. You make them? Uh-huh. They're pablum cookies. Pablum cookies? Best thing in the world for you. But I don't like them. Neither do I. But you and Mommy always say the things I don't like are the best ones. Daddy, do you mind if I marry Al Garrity when I grow up? What? Don't you think you better wait till Mr. Garrity asks Daddy for your hand? Oh, he has. He's crazy about me. Well, he is, huh? We have a visitor. Say, how do you do to Mrs. Forsythe, Bettina? Then we'll go have some lunch. Hello, Miss Forsythe. How do you do? I do all right. You're pretty. Thank you, my dear. Lunch, Tina. They're always afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. And I usually do. We'll be right back, I'm afraid. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wiggins, about your accident. Oh, it was no accident. What do you mean? Well, somebody hired a couple of thugs to try to persuade me to keep out of a murder case. 
You seem to take it lightly. Well, it's no use crying over spilled brains, Mrs. Forsythe. Don't you think it's about time to tell me the truth? I don't know what you mean. Well, let me put it this way. Amanda had a child, and that child was Bettina. Isn't that right? Yes. And why didn't you tell me that before? I promised Amanda to keep her secret. And why did you come? Because I was worried about you. And? And because I know Amanda made a will a few days ago in which she left the bulk of her fortune to Bettina. That's it. That's the answer. That's why Freddy is pressing these fraud charges. He's not only trying to take Bettina away from us, he wants to adopt her for himself. Well, if I only knew where he was. He's back at the hotel. He phoned me this morning. He is. Now, oh, excuse me. Hello? Call from Mr. Peter Wiggins. Speaking. New York calling. Here's your party. Pete. Garrity. Have you got any information? Yeah. I just came back from Vermont. I brought back old Doc Peabody's office records, which proved the date of your wife's birth. Great. Uh, what about Miss Sugar? I'm coming to that. I just found out she left New York bound for L.A. an hour ago. Flight 10, Pacific Airlines. Need the plane and grab her. Well, we don't need her now. We might need her as a witness. The guy that sent her to New York wants her to come back. What did he send for her for? To kill her. Kill her? Right. Don't let her get away from you. Okay, uh, when are you coming home? Tomorrow morning. Right. I'll be there tonight and meet that plane. So long. This way, Miss Sugar. How'd you know my name? What are you, a cop? Amateur division. Come on, I want to talk to you. What about? Oh, we'll get to that soon enough. Hey, who are you anyway? Peter Wiggins. I've been waiting to talk to you. How'd you know I was coming in on that plane? How'd you know I was coming in at all? The fact is you're here. That's important. Come on. Mall Hotel. Said and done. What do you want, Mr. Wiggins? Information. There was a booth for it at the airport. Yeah, but the information clerk hadn't been paid $2,000 to keep his mouth shut. Just what do you want? Me? I'm the guy that adopted the little girl that you were never the mother of, remember? Driver! Listen, Miss Sugar, this isn't a game of jacks, it's murder. And you're in it right up to here. You know that Amanda Forsythe was shot and killed the night before you left for New York. And you also know who did it. I don't. You're lying. I don't. The man who killed her is the same one who paid you to get out of town, and I want to know who it is. That was an advance for a Broadway show. Listen, Miss Sugar, I don't think you realize what time it is. What time is it? Much later than you think. Boy, that was close. Yeah, too close. I got the girl. Follow that car. Who, me? Not on your life, brother. You want to obstruct justice? Get going. There's a killer in that car. Okay, but my heart ain't gonna be in it. Better go around that corner. Follow him. Looks like we've lost him. Good, and I hope we never find him again. Now, pull over to the curb. It's a pleasure. Take this girl to the morgue and then call the police. Tell them to meet me at the Palm Isle Hotel, room 1204. There may be some trouble. Right. Hey, who's going to pay me? St. Peter? No, I won't. Here's Ken. Keep the change. Now hurry. Gee, thanks. Who is it? I'm not going to open up till I know who it is. Peter, wait. Open up. Oh, please. 
Oh, my, glad to see you. Why did you kill Amanda Forsythe and Carolyn Sugar? You're out of your mind, Peter. I didn't kill anybody. You are lying. You killed Carolyn Sugar not more than an hour ago. But I didn't. I didn't. I know you did because I saw you. I swear I didn't. Pete, let me explain. I, I guess I shouldn't have got mixed up in this in the first place, but I was broke and needed the money. Look, I may be rotten to the core, but I couldn't kill anybody. Not even for a million dollars? I'll admit I wanted the money. And I'll admit I was in that car, but I didn't do the shooting. I'm no murderer. There were two of you in that car. Then who fired the shot that killed Carolyn Sugar? I did. Freddy? I got to worrying about the way you acted in the car after I shot Sugar. Ross, Ross, I wouldn't have told anybody. Really, I wouldn't. After the way you went to pieces tonight, I can never trust you again. Ross, are you crazy? Crazy about a million dollars. I'm going to have Tina. And I'll be the only one who knows there's a will making her sole beneficiary of the Forsyth fortune. The one who controls the child controls that fortune. You're insane. You'll never get away with it. There's only you and Freddy between me and all that money. Freddy, I'm sorry it had to turn out this way, but you're weak. No. No, Ross. Ross, don't! <laughs> Open up. It's police. Let's break it down. Take a look at him, Pete. Come on, let's help him up. He's coming out of it. Now, what's this all about? I was really in a jail. Flathead comes around a corner with his gun blazing. Bullets were chipping the bricks right by my ear. And all of a sudden, I watched him. He crept toward me a little closer. Not so loud. You'll make my angel food drop. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I know if you got a beat on me, the force would lose his bravest cop in his deadliest shot. So I shoot from the hip. To be continued in the next installment. Oh, oh Daddy, we're just getting good. <laughs> well, what's the news? That last will and testament was completely valid, but Tina's the sole heir of Amanda Forsythe. That means that you really are a little girl and nobody can ever take you away from us again. It also means you're going to be very wealthy. I suppose now we'll have trouble with her wanting to grow up to be a fresh young rich kid, an heiress. Not me, Daddy. All I want to grow up to be is a good cook and marry Al. <laughs> <laughs> See what? Wow! Hello, Tony. In the eighth race at Holly Park today, give me six bucks across the board on a beetle named Happy Ending. That's right. Happy ending.